my guest this morning, um, he's a doctor, and his concerns are very different. Uh, so I don't think uh, uh, my, my guest, uh, Dr. Um, uh, Kelechi uh, Chikezie, Secretary General of the National Association of Resident Doctors, uh, is going to be concerning himself on duly with that. <laughs> but you're very welcome. We are all Nigerians. We are all so Nigerians, are but everybody has everything. different aspects. <laughs> um, but, but, oh, okay, now that we're there, did you have, did you, this is breaking news. I'm just hearing it when you are hearing it. Did you, does anything occur to you? Do you have any comment to make? Uh, well, I wouldn't have anything. To there say you go. On that. Well, it's breaking news. In, indeed. So we need to digest the news. Indeed. Mm. But uh, Amir Fele, uh, the uh, suspended CBN governor, he's pleaded not guilty to the two count charge. And uh, the federal government uh, has actually opposed um, you know, his bail, but Justice Weibo uh, has granted him bail in the sum of 20 million naira. Mm. Um, so that's the much with that. Now, Doctors, in addition to that, shall I say, have yeah. other concerns. Yes, <laughs> yes we do. <laughs> you have other concerns. Uh, in so much so that you've actually announced that a strike might be in the offing. It's like, what is it this time? Because there was a time when they were saying um, they're going to come up with some legislation that will prevent doctors from jackpying. I understand mm -hmm. that that is not your issue. That, I think, can be resolved differently. But... Uh, what is it? Is it that there are outstanding uh, matters uh, to the agreements that have been reached with government? Uh, what is the concern of the National Association of Resident Doctors on behalf of resident doctors? And how, how real is this um, the threat of a, of a strike? All right. Thank you. Good morning. Um, you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, agreements reached with government. Um, there have been numerous agreements reached, and um, it's sad to say that um, none has materialized. That is the truth. Now, why are we still here? Um, you recall that the in fact, um, since 2022, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors has been issuing ultimatums, and when government comes and calls for a truce, we shift the goalposts. All right, so um, we have been... Please continue. Oh, okay, thank you. So we have been um, in and out of discussions with government over the challenges of resident doctors in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And um, since, like I said, 2022 till now, we've been shifting um, the D-Day, so to speak. We've been shifting the evil day all in the uh, bid to see if dialogue could yield some results. You also recall that sometime in May this year, we had to embark on a warning strike. The government called again as usual. Um, we reached some um, understanding with government and agreed that we should um, uh, suspend the strike while government gave some timelines to addressing the issues that were raised. Um, it's sad to say that up until now, those timelines have long expired and none of those issues has been resolved conclusively. Now, most of these issues, uh, if not all of them, concern uh, remuneration, right? They concern not so. Okay. Um, uh, you could say most of them, but not exactly so. Now, there's the challenge we have. You are all aware of the brain drain challenge we have in Nigeria. That's right. And it's taking a toll on our members who are, who are working under pressure. One doctor is doing the work of about 10 doctors because we don't have hands. A lot of people are leaving the system. A lot of people are seeking greener pastures abroad. So we have too many of our doctors working under a lot of pressure because they have to cover for those people who have left. So we are doing the work of so many persons. And it's also affecting the Nigerian citizens mm -hmm. because they come to the hospitals, they have to stay longer before they could see the doctors. Sometimes cases are canceled, surgical cases are canceled because there's no manpower. Wow. Okay, so the burnout effect on our members is becoming excruciating. And it was one of the issues that led to the previous ultimatums and the eventual warning strike in the earlier part of the year. And it was agreed that the as a stopgap measure, the government will issue a policy on what we call one-for-one -one replacement 
of exited clinical staff. Now, what that means is that when a doctor lives ordinarily in Nigeria, before any CMD in any of the hospitals can employ anybody. Chief Medical Director. Yes. They would have to uh, get waivers. You will get a waiver from the Office of the Head of Service of the Federation. You will get waiver from the budget office. And you're going to get a waiver from the federal character. Now, the, to get these three waivers could take them as much as six, seven, eight months, sometimes up to 11 months to be able to get the three waivers. If you don't have the three of them, you cannot employ. So you realize that if a doctor or a nurse leaves the system, um, you have another 11 months to wow. get a waiver wow. to replace the person. Wow. So we said, no, that's not fair on the system. It's not fair on the people who are staying back to work in Nigeria. So let's have a stopgap measure. While you're looking for those waivers, can there be a way to replace these persons? Okay, in such a way that once one person goes, now that one person that has left is already in the system. He's being paid salary before he left or she so left. Let someone else. Okay, let someone there. just enter that space. But as that, okay? that has been difficult for government. It has been difficult for government. Now, the, the Federal Ministry of Health earlier in the year, in fact, precisely in February, set up a committee. That committee, and it was a committee of stakeholders involved in this process, the committee of um, chief medical directors, um, staff of the Federal Ministry of Health, and other agencies of government. Now, when they gathered, they came up with a draft policy. So all that was needed was for that policy to be sent to the office of the um, um, head of the Federal Civil Service so that it could be implemented, come out as a circular that the chief medical directors can implement. Now, it was agreed in our last conciliatory meeting with the then Labor Minister before he left office mm -hmm. on the 19th of May that the office of the Fed, um, head of Federal uh, Civil Service had 24th of May to meet with the necessary stakeholders to look into that draft policy so, and secularize it. So when 24th of May came around, nothing. Nothing. Now, they were told that by 5th of June, that circular should be out for implementation. 5th of June came. Yes, and, and passed. And, and passed. And Still, nothing has happened. Nothing. Now, what we are hearing from them is that they set up another committee to clean up the system before they can come up. You see... Have you set a date yet for the strike that we're examining now? The, the, that is the commencement of the strike. Uh, truth be told, um, the strike action, um, uh, we, we issued an ultimatum that expired on the 19th of July. Okay. 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 We issued an ultimatum that expired on the 19th of July. And nothing has still and been done. And nothing has still been done. Now, what we have is that a few days to that night, in fact, a day or two before the night, we were called for a meeting, and all we had again was give us time. Oh. All right, so we, we have been having a series of meetings. Uh, in all fairness to the side of government, the, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation has tried to wade in. The Speaker of the House of Representatives yesterday also called us for a meeting. And all they have been saying to us is give us give time. More time. In the meantime, yes. uh, uh, let me apologize to Babs in Italy. Uh, good morning, Mr. Babs. I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting all that while, but you probably can understand. We wanted to get it out of the doctor. I think I was still, I left it too late. Babs had called in from Italy. So I apologize to you, Babs, uh, in Italy. He wanted to come in. Uh, he, I, I think Babs wanted to talk about two, two subject matters. One, the just finished subject, and uh, also he wanted to weigh in on all of this. And, and so at every point, government has been asking for more time. And um, doctors, you know, what, what, what's the attitude of the doctors um, to these appeals uh, requests from government? Is it that, I'm sorry, we've run out of time and we're about to commence action, or are you going to have to go into a meeting where you consider this latest request? Oh, well, uh, we have meetings that are scheduled for this week, the National Executive Council meeting of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors. And of course, um, every request is to the neck and not to us as individual leaders of the association. Mm -hmm. So we, were, we are going to take the request to the neck. But what we must understand is that, you see, the, the request for more time, 
is an unending request. It has been an unending request. Okay, we keep getting that from the side of government. And people are wondering, for how long okay. do we wait? Mm. That is one. Two, there are issues on the table that can be resolved in one day, two days. Granted that there are some that we may need to sit down and discuss. Like the policy we talked about, there is already a draft policy. What is the difficult thing in secularizing it? Now, if you're saying that you need to clean up the mess in the hospitals, I mean, that can be done without frustrating Nigerian doctors who are working in those hospitals because that is what is not, going on. Not to mention patients. Okay, not to mention patients. Not, not to because patients. they too are, are bearing the brunt. And, and, and then when you talk about the 2023 Medical Residency Training Fund, mm -hmm. that has been worked on. It was budgeted for. Okay, now they say they are waiting for approval by the president. And this has been long submitted to Mr. President. What is the difficult thing in getting this approval? Indeed. Uh, uh, Mr. George, good morning to you, sir, and uh, thank you for holding on. Go ahead now, please. Good morning, Uncle Yuri. Good Uncle morning, Yuri, sir. I, I wanted to reach you during your first segment. I couldn't. I don't know if you have 90 seconds for me to say some of both topics. Okay, but go I, ahead, please. Yes, this, the first one, Uncle Yuri, about uh, palliatives. I've heard many people talking about don't give money to people, don't give... Those who are saying that, they are not the category of people that such money is meant for. In Lagos here, the fifth largest economy in Africa, Uncle Yori, I can tell you there are six people who can cook a pot of soup with 2,000 naira. 2,000 naira, as costly as things are. The, the, the only challenge that is there is that such people are not in the data system. Most of them are not in the data system. The government can reach them through traditional rulers and community leaders. They, these people know them. There is no way we can become a perfect society overnight. We have to make do with what is available. So the palliative government is not only doing now, uh, uh, doling out cash. They are also putting other measures in place. But the cash issue should not just be waved up because it is that because those who are saying it are not the ones that the money is meant for. The okay. people who the money are meant for, they need it. That's what I want to say. All right. Then, the doctor, I want to please... Very, very briefly, please. The gentleman before you. Yes. Anybody in, who has chosen to go into the medical profession, I know primarily it is a humanitarian job. If you are going into the medical profession because you want to make money, the profession is not for you. Nigeria, any economy can only pay Jews and salaries to workers within the compact of the economy. So if they are asking for something, they should make sure it is within what the economy can accommodate. I'm not saying a doctor should not earn uh, you know, adequate salary, but that, that adequacy must be within the scope of the affordability of that given economy. Mm, that's, okay. that's the point I'm making. I get you. Uh, thank you very much for calling in, Mr. George. And... Um... Also for holding on a bit. Well, we, we, we often hear this uh, about the doctor is a special breed. Um, he's not exactly like a, uh, not just a, a mechanic. He's not, it doesn't matter the kind of engineer. It might be a, a nuclear, whatever kind of engineer. Mm. The doctor deals with life and wholesomeness and well-being. Therefore, uh, you, 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 uh, as our people say, body no be wood. Mm -hmm. It's not a wood issue. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the case that he is making. So I know mm -hmm. it sometimes can annoy doctors, but what do you think about what he is saying that whatever is, uh, whatever is being sought has to be within the ambit of um, what can be done within the economy? Mm -hmm. And perhaps this continual request for more time, more time, more time is perhaps trying to pacify you doctors that they won't like to hear that we can't afford what you're asking. And so let's just buy time. I'm not saying that's what's mm -hmm. going on. Um, but you, you take it from Mr. George's yes. perspective, which is mm. that the doctor is a special kind of guy. He can't mm. do like, he can't go on strike like everybody else can go on strike. All right. Thank you. I appreciate his comments. And of course, um, it's something we've been hearing. And um, you cannot take um, the humanitarian aspect of what we do from us. Um, but you see, when people say that, the other question is, 
Um, are we going to go to the market with humanitarian <laughs> as the legal tender? I knew that was going to okay, come. Okay, because um, the child of the doctor will go to school, the doctor will have to eat food, yes. the, doctor, the doctor will have to clothe himself. The and let me tell you something. Market. Let me tell you something. When they hear you are a doctor, they hike the price. It's worse. They hike yes, the price. Yes. Wherever you go to buy anything, once they know you are a doctor, they hike the price. So um, if humanitarian could pay for our bills, we'll be fine with that. And this matter but about knowing sadly, a doctor cannot. and consequently hiking the price, mm -hmm. I think it's a throwback to when uh, people really imagined that, look, because of how long it takes to become a doctor, mm. uh, you spend all that time in school, in university, mm. um, your, your salaries must be humongous. <laughs> That's the way people have sort of worked it out. You oh, understand? Yes. I understand? And uh, a person who spent all that time in university, what, seven mm. years uh, probably? You know, I don't know. Uh, that... That man is making a lot of money. So I'm not going to yes. sell that tomato. That same tomato, there's no way you can buy it, it at 10000 For you, doctor, <laughs> it's 12005 Now, it, it, it may sound unbelievable, but there are doctors in Nigeria who have packed their vehicles and have taken to public transport to go to work because of the current situation with oil prices. So um, when people think that doctors are very rich people, uh, well, mm. I, I don't know who they are thinking about. If it is my kind of doctor, that's strange. Okay. That's very strange. Um, uh, uh, our last yes. caller today, Mr. Debayo in Surulere. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Mrs. Adebayo. Oh, Akin Bayo. Adebayo, Mrs. Adebayo. Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Adebayo. Good morning to you, ma'am. Uh, good morning. Yes, I actually want to continue for the other man left. I want to talk about the palliative. Okay, very uh, briefly, please. Go ahead, please. Yes, because that's yes, not the subject I, I matter think, now. But I you've called in. Nigeria so be brief about it, please. With uh, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tolumbu, the president. Yes. I think this man just took over power not up to three months now. And everybody have done a lot. Everybody have accepted that he has done a lot of things. You know? So if he had to say the subsidy is gone... And the other people just took it upon themselves and uh, asked the fuel. I don't think it's the man's fault. But what I expected him to have done is to have arranged the what the man said that is not palliative, according to the Alake, you know, to have arranged that aspect so that Nigerians can feel it. Okay. You know, I know it's very hard for Nigerians now, but I just want to appeal to Nigerians that we should be patient with Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tulumbu and let us see what he has to offer to this country. Okay. Because Nigeria has gone down, down, down deep for a very long time, over, over 18 years. Okay, and thank you very much, Mrs. Adebayo. It's a subject that we passed. And uh, did you have anything to add to the imminency or the danger of uh, a strike by resident doctors? Uh, she's gone. Okay, um, because, um, you know, it's just that when she wanted to get in then, maybe she couldn't. Okay. And so now that she got in, she's using it. But, um, well, uh, Dr. Chik is here. We're going to have to leave it here. Um, uh, taking all that you have said, we've been served notice that, look, you've done everything. Government is continuing to ask for time. The last uh, sort of deadline was on the 19th, did you say? Yes, yes 19th. And let me just say, please, Thank that you, please. Um, um, the, the ultimatum expired on the 19th of July. Um, our members have actually been calling for action. We have been the ones holding them back okay. because of all of this pleas mm. for time. Mm. But like I said earlier, there are things that can be sorted out in one or two days. Indeed. Let those ones be sorted out. Okay. Okay? Because uh, we don't know how long we can hold off our members. So there is this threat. All right. There is this danger. We're going to And we think if government prioritizes health, that they should do something quickly today, tomorrow, oh. to avert any action. Today, tomorrow. Yes, Thank sir. you very much, Thank Dr. Kelechi uh, Chikezie, Secretary General, National Association of Resident Doctors. And that's where we're going to have to um, uh, leave it today. But just to remind you, uh, you'll be hearing about later on, but the suspended CBN governor, Godwin Omethiele, pleads not guilty to two charges of um, alleged illegal gun possession. Uh, he's moved for bail. The bail has been, a grant, has been granted, even though the federal government opposes MFLA, well, opposed MFLA's uh, bail application and has labeled him a flight risk. Nevertheless, uh, Justice Oweibo has granted MFLA bail in the sum of 20 million naira with one surety 
in uh, like sum. So um, that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Polarin. Bye-bye for now.